Welcome everyone to regular Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, December 16th, 2013. It is a six o'clock meeting start. I just want to remind everyone that this show, or this uh, show, this meeting is being uh, cable cast through ACMI.tv and may be recorded by other individuals or reporters who are here. Uh, that said, um, Mr. Greeley, could you? Yep. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we wanted to uh, start tonight to ask everybody for a moment of silence for Dr. Michael Foley, who passed away unexpectedly, uh, being waked as we speak. Uh, Mike and I went to grammar school and high school together. And uh, in high school, Michael was captain of the football, the baseball, the basketball teams. He was president of the class. And he was the number one student in the class in terms of intelligence. Uh, at Arlington Catholic, you sat in the order of intelligence. I was in the gymnasium in the I, back. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but Mike, uh, tremendous accomplishments, became the director of internal medicine, I think, if that's the correct title, at St. Elizabeth, was also associated with Mount Auburn, and very involved in this town, volunteer, um, provided volunteer services as a doctor for the football team and others. And uh, when we tried to save Sims Hospital, Mike was right on the front line with all of us. So. A tremendous personal loss for me and a tremendous loss for the town. So with your permission, Mr. Chairman, a moment of silence, please, for Dr. Michael Foley. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Sir. Really. I also, uh, uh, before we get really started, I wanted to welcome our town council, Doug Beim, who is he with, excuse me, Doug Heim, who is with us today for his first day in his first meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And? And? <laughs> you know everything? <laughs> I, I told him to expect to know everything. <laughs> All right, uh, welcome. Thank you. Our first item is the consent agenda. Uh, the, we have the minutes of the meeting of December 2nd. We have an appointment of new election workers, John Crowley of Ridge Street, Nancy Ott of Glenburn Road, Paul Shaw of Inverness Road, and for, uh, for approval, Kino to go at the right spot on 1389 Mass Ave. Move approval. Second. Mr. Kira. Yeah, I just have a question. Is the keynote to go an approval or a receipt? When I read it, it looked like we were just being notified. And yeah. We have I the think, opportunity to register. Yeah, the State Lottery Commission actually is the one that would approve. But yeah. We, I think that it would be appropriate under either. I have real. No. Okay. That's fine. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Next up, request from Monotomy Grill and Tavern for a late night on New Year's Eve of this year. Is anyone here from, the, all right, so Monotomy, they have furnished us with a written request for a one-time event for the end of the year that they would stay open until 1 a.m. Um, and that they would sell liquor until that time. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I'm not sure if this has been I called earlier in the week. I asked the stipulation be that alcohol stop a half hour before they close. Was that something you were able to speak I, to them I about? I talked to Billy about that. He, they usually do that even at 12 o'clock. I think they'd stop at 11 yeah. Okay, so at least a half hour before closing time. Is so that okay? It's, it's fine with me. So it, can I, if I can suggest perhaps mm -hmm. uh, so then saying 1.30 with, but whatever it is, they have to stop a half an hour before they actually close. That's fine. So that would actually permit them to sell to one. And the reason I say that is simply because, if I remember correctly, that's what we said for the other applicant. Yeah. 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 Um, I'll make that motion if it's okay with my colleagues. Is there a second? To second. Okay. We have a motion. Subject to all conditions of set for. I thought you did make the motion. Yes. Yes, second. Okay. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Next up, Whittemore uh, Park signage, Ted Fields. Welcome. Well, thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm before you at the request of the town manager to uh, briefly uh, summarize a uh, request I believe for sponsorship for a new sign on uh, Whittemore Park uh, advertising the shopping, uh, small shopping district on Mystic Street between the Russell Common parking lot and Mass Avenue. Uh, it's a very narrow, uh, rather dark uh, right of way. Uh, it's rather hard to see from Mass Avenue or the, uh, the parking garage or Mystic Street itself, or, or Medford Street, I'm sorry. And the merchants in that section uh, overwhelmingly uh, approve, uh, asked me and support a sign 
indicating where their shops are uh, in that section. Uh, in your packet, I included a, uh, a mock-up of the proposed sign, and I also have a larger, nearly to scale one here. I will unfurl in a second. And I apologize, the filigree at the bottom did not come out correct. That will be white. It's not the rather off gray that you see. Um, I've also shown um, a copy of the email from the local uh, representative of the, of the merchants in that area, and as well, a photo of a two-scale version of the sign in not the exact colors, but a mock-up of it at the uh, proposed location uh, at the uh, head of uh, Mystic Street, uh, the intersection of Mystic Street and Massachusetts Avenue. And uh, as I say in my uh, packet to you, uh, I've gotten two price quotes uh, for manufacturing this sign. Uh, with manufacturing and professional installation by a sign company, the costs range uh, from $506 to $530. Um, that would come down if DPW were able to install uh, the sign. And here is a uh, nearly full scale mock up. It's the largest I could produce on a plotter. It would be something akin to this. And again, uh, in consultation with the businesses and um, uh, town staff, we feel that if we mount it about six inches or a foot off the ground, it will elevate it away from the elements enough, but still keep it fairly unobtrusive to uh, all but you know, the shoppers and, and folks who, will, who it's meant to serve. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them. Mr. Greeley? Yeah, uh, so thank you, Ted. <coughs> is this the approximate location you recommend? That, that is place? the approximate location. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, in the field, we'll uh, make it a, exact with uh, consultation with DPW and the sign company or, or whoever installs it. We'll, adjust it on site. Um, thank you, and I'd, I'd just like you to know I've received quite a few compliments about the job you have done so oh, well, thank far you. as economic development. Oh, today. I appreciate that, thank a you. A number of business owners. Oh, uh, good. So thank you for that excellent work. Well, it's uh, my pleasure. Mr. Terry, Mr. Fields, uh, do you have any thoughts on how First Lights went? Uh, I was there uh, all five hours of First Lights, and I was in all three sections. I strolled by uh, around 11.45 just to make sure preparations were all set. And uh, to my uh, eye, things went very, very well, better than I had hoped, yeah. uh, especially in the Heights and Capitol Square. Yeah. And the, uh, the, uh, the foot traffic in the center really coalesced at the uh, end of the festivities with the, the lighting ceremony by the Central Fire Station. And there must have been several hundred people in the center that, from what I could see, subsequently went out and shopped and dined and whatnot. So I think for all three sections, it was very successful. So to what degree do you attribute the commercial sung by the select tones for creating excitement about this event? Well, I think it was a crucial factor. <laughs> <laughs> you continue to do excellent work. Thank you. Thank you. I hope Attorney Heim is taking this in. <laughs> Take so, notes. I, I move approval of the, uh, the request. A second. second. Sorry, Joe, I thought we should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> I got Joe and Steve on the move in the second. Uh, any further discussion? Um, I, I, I would just uh, echo that I was at the Chamber of Commerce the other night, and the merchants are very um, excited about this. This has been uh, an ongoing uh, concern, I think, that that stretch of, it's actually addressed for Mystic Street, but it gets lost uh, to a lot of the traffic. So uh, glad to see Mr. Fields uh, taking, this, taking this on. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, five zero. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're all set. Aye. I will say that when Mr. Fields started talking, which was, I suddenly noticed, we have amplification in this room. I know. I was worried. So I oh, broke oh, amp I at the very end. Yeah. Yes. Do you hear you that? that up? Yeah. We, so ACMI was in last, wow. last meeting, and we were talking about it, and all of a sudden, his voice was much louder. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. How excited must this audience be that can hear every word that we say? You mean we don't have to hire the sign language interpreter? <laughs> no. From the, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, so we should, uh, we should thank ACMI. I don't yes, know yeah. what the right vehicle for that is, but I'm really glad that they, they got, they got that done. Um, so next up is our licenses and permits. So it is the end of the year, and we're looking, of course, at the start of 2014. And most, or at least many licenses in town, um, especially the ones issued by the selectmen, are annual and are renewed at this time. 
And so we have a series of memos from different departments within the town with recommendations to renew. There's a few that are actually, that don't, we're not renewing because they haven't actually been granted yet, even though they're in the records. But other than that, we have um, a set of memo, a set of licenses for contractors and drain layers, um, various alcohols, including all alcohol restaurant, all alcohol club, package stores, wine and malt, food, including common victual or food vendor. Uh, we have lodging houses, public entertainment, uh, second hand dealer, and I think that that's the set we've got. Move approval uh, on all subject to all conditions as set forth. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. 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 Joe. Well, I just have a question because we did receive some uh, fairly, um, you know, a list of comments from the, the Board of Health regard, and it looks like most of these have been um, uh, have been uh, settled. Is is that my understanding? Here. The ones that haven't been, they will not be given a license until they have been Okay. So would our uh, subject to all conditions clause cover? I cover those. So. Yeah. Is there, so I looked at this and like, so there's two that haven't yet opened. Mm -hmm. There's one that's all, well, the only one business. that's like, that isn't okay is the savory plate. And that's because, and it's closed. Right. Yeah. So I mean, we wouldn't issue that because it's closed. So is there another one? So I think everything else. I think we're all set. Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't know. I, it looks like we can't really act on the ones that have not reopened yet. Can we, or? I don't think so. Yeah. We just haven't issued them yet. So. Okay. I, I think it's a moot point. Diane? Just one question, and if no one knows the answer right now, I wouldn't expect you to. You can let me know tomorrow. On the lodging houses, what's located at 87 Pleasant Street? Do we know? The um, residential mental health. Okay, okay, thank you. Are the other ones are self-explanatory, Caritas and Salvation Army. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I, sh I should also mention that uh, as a part of this that we should extend, uh, what, uh, I'm sure that Mr. Greeley intended in his motion to extend the Hackney licenses past the year because, and we're gonna renew them in January. Yes, I did, sir. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, licenses are done. Next up, presentation from the family of John F. McCacker. Is there members of the family who are here? Come on up. So should I, Mr. I'll give a quick, yeah, go uh, for yeah. it. Please, Adam. So uh, mem members of the board, I was contacted by William J. Riley, who's the managing partner of Forward Capital Partners. Um, Mr. Riley, is that? Yes. Nice, nice to meet nice you. To meet you. Uh, in regards to the estate of John McEachern, who's a longtime Arlington resident, uh, and in his estate and his will, uh, has left some very generous gifts to the town of Arlington. So uh, part, of, uh, part of that was wanting to be able to come before the board, talk about Mr. McEachern's love for Arlington, about the gifts, and also have his family have an opportunity to come before the board. Well, welcome, all of you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having us. Uh, we just wanted to say a few words about uh, our Uncle Mac. Uh, we have with us today, myself, Bill Riley, who I consider myself John's best friend, grew up with him in East Arlington, um, went to school together, in, uh, elementary school, high school, and, and all. And we have um, a couple of his godchildren here, my son Jack, Thank Riley. You. We have Philip Tapscott, Harry Tapscott, and Bob Tapscott, the father. Um, we all have a relationship to Arlington. Uh, all of us have lived at one time or another in Arlington. John's parents um, both uh, lived in Arlington throughout their lives. And John was an only child, and he, but he had a lot of people that loved him very much. He loved everything that it was of, uh, about Arlington. Um, he defended it to the, the ninth. Um, and he was just a great guy, and uh, we're glad that he was able to give um, some of this, his estate to the town so that the town could enjoy uh, some beautiful trees. And um, he's also given uh, about uh, I think fifty thousand dollars to Robbins Library as well. Um, he has uh, a couple of wishes uh, that he'd like to um, see um, um, that the town do with that that money, um, and um, we'd appreciate it if you would consider that. Uh, so I will say that I was I was absolutely delighted to learn of the gift, and I'm I know that we are all and other people in the town are very grateful for for the for the donation. Um, for people who are watching, it's 146,000 uh, to be 
donated for the purposes of using for trees, including um, a, mem a memorial bench for him, and, a, and a 50,000 for the Robbins Library, which is a very, very uh, generous gift. And we definitely, we thank him, and it's a, it's a good, t I'm sure his memory is well served by, by that gift. Kevin? Yeah, was he a hockey player? Did no, he was. No, he, I, 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 no. I know that. I know the McGavin huh? you're thinking of. No, you're thinking of a different one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> different no. McGavin. No, but he had a connection to Matinon High School. He, did they go to Matinon? Those McGavins? Yeah. Yeah. No, he was. He went to Matinon for four years as well. So I think he may have known those folks, but they were not related. No. Well, this is, uh, you know, obviously his life uh, is a tremendous gift to the town of Arlington, and, and this is certainly a wonderful gift. I. I move that we receive with pleasure and great thanks and we refer to the Public Memorial Committee with our strongest recommendation that his wishes be fulfilled of a tree and a bench in Waldo Park. Um, do I need to say anything else? Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Diane? I, I just want to say, first of all, not only what a great gift this is um, from Mr. McEachern, but also from his family and friends. Um, and I applaud you for coming out and honoring his wishes by this very generous um, portion of his estate. Um, and as you have said and others, he obviously cared a lot about the town. Um, and I think it's just amazing that he's continuing to give back. And I think it will be such a great solace down at Waldo Park where, where we have something commemorating Mr. McEachern um, and where people can go and people who know him can sit there and remember and people who don't will say how come who was that mr mcgeckron and they'll find <laughs> out about him and yeah. i so i think that's a great tribute um great tribute from him from his family and from his friends and thank you so much for thank you coming so here tonight and giving us such good news thank you joe i just want to say that you know oftentimes when we go through our agendas and you get to uh, traffic rules and orders and other business which is the, the segment of the agenda this was <laughs> under a lot of times it's not fun things that we uh that we um deal with and it's not happy things it did disputes um, so um, you know first of all I want to say sorry for your your loss of, 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 um, of your friend and your your, uh, your, your relative he, he obviously did understand that the town though um, you know we, we suffered losses in street trees in that in that end of town just a couple of years ago very horrendous losses and this certainly helps greatly to help help with the rebuilding um, that we'll be doing um, and we are doing um, around that um, and um, he obviously also had a, a good sense of, of where we have to go in moving the libraries into the 21st century as we try to build up the you know the new digital um, collection so it's very much appreciated and um, and uh, thank you I mean were, were these had he discussed these with you the, the his his thoughts about where where the greatest good could be accomplished? Or? Well, John was, was somewhat of a, a man of, of his own desires, his own wishes, and, and had strong opinions about a lot of things. And I think the things he cared most about, I, and this is not just saying it because when we're here, is Arlington. Um, he, uh, he used to give me a hard time because I moved to Winchester. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> um, and he never stopped giving me a hard time about that. Um, but the things about the old radio shows and, and all that, he, was, uh, he loved that type of thing. He was very nostalgic about life. And uh, he used to tell me that I you know, forgot everything about our childhood because he had these stories that he used to tell about our childhood. And I, I couldn't remember half of them. But he's very nostalgic, very nostalgic guy. And uh, he loved old radio shows. And, and he wanted to see those preserved. And he's had, he has all of those you know, terabytes, whatever you want to call them, of old radio shows that that he wants us to preserve, and we've been preserving it, and we can give those over to the, to the town as well, um, so that they have that in their collection. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank All you. right, so we have a motion uh, by Mr. Greeley, seconded by, I believe, Mr. Curo. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, 5-0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. much. Next up, vote to authorize to renew intermunicipal <coughs> agreement with Bedford for Regional Energy Manager, Mr. Town Manager. So as part of the agreement that we have with Bedford uh, to have a regional energy manager uh, is the possibility of up to five uh, two-year extensions uh, before we look at the agreement again. Uh, and it stipulates in the agreement that we need to have each community vote by January 1st of the expiring year to renew the agreement. So that puts us up against this January 1st because it expires June 30th of next year. Uh, so what I'm asking the board to do is authorize me to sign a two-year renewal which would commence on July 1st, 2014 and run for two years to June 30, 2016. Uh, I know um, 
I've been very pleased with the results we've seen since hiring an energy manager. Uh, I know Bedford has been. We've had a series of joint meetings between myself and the facilities director uh, in Bedford to, to monitor progress. Uh, our work with the energy manager has been focused more on facilities improvements. Bedford's work has been focused more on behavioral improvements and uh, building inhabitants sort of behaviors and how they utilize uh, heating and cooling systems, which um, I think frankly is more beneficial to us because she's doing the work we need to uh, have done here, but also bringing that expertise that she has in Bedford in terms of eventually trying to change our culture with our, uh, you know, again, with our building inhabitants. Um, in the upcoming months leading up to town meeting, we're going to be putting out uh, several documents in regards to some of the recent projects she's been able to implement since coming on board, uh, and also a number of other projects that she's been working on. The one I'll <clears throat> note tonight uh, is a very exciting one. Um, we have two separate data centers in the high school, one for school data, one for town data. And the cooling system that <clears throat> is in the town's portion of that is uh, on the verge of failing. So David Good has been looking at options for potentially replacing that. Uh, we looped Ruthie Bennett, our energy manager, into that discussion. She's already uh, got a free assessment from the EPA or for the EPA to pay for an assessment uh, by a consultant to come in and look at what we can do and is working on an option of bringing both data centers together and getting one cooling system that might be able to be completely paid for by an EPA grant. So that's just an example of the kind of uh, mm. focus she's been able to bring mm. uh, you know, to, to how we look at all of our facilities and how we use energy. So again, I ask the board's uh, approval to authorize me to sign that to your extension. Steve, um, no, I appreciate the work um, that this individual is doing. And I was wondering if you could speak to how you got to the two thirds in Arlington, one third in Bedford, and uh, how that is the most beneficial to us. <coughs> so um, that, that really came about when the MAPC was seeking people interested uh, in a position and, and creating a position. And at that point, we had expressed that what we wanted to fund and what we thought we could put to work was two days a week. Bedford had said they could use one day. And way back, Woburn had said that they could use two days. Uh, eventually, Woburn dropped out of those discussions. Uh, but we stayed on with two. Bedford still wanted one. And that's what created this three-day position. But you know, we sort of generated the two from what, our, what we thought we could reasonably budget within the DPW administrative budget. Okay, great. Thank you. Joe? Have we approached Woburn again to see if maybe they've had a change of mind over the last um, two years? You know, we've, we've not primarily because the, um, Ruthie, the current person in the position, is interested in just three days a week. Yeah. Um, it's, it's sort of a, a discussion we continue to have of whether or not she has an interest in expanding that. Uh, so, and, and also, she's brought to light the reality that adding another community could begin to dilute how effective she is in each community. Uh, so that we'd have to look at that too before we would take a step to mm -hmm. expanding it to another community. Okay, great, thanks. Diane? Since this is dated October of 2012, and it was a different board configuration then, um, legally is it okay that we do that first off, that we this board approves the contract starting in October of 2012? There's no issue with that? I'm not sure. We, the yeah. thing it says the term of this agreement shall commence on October 1st, 2012, and t expire on June 30th, 2014. It's okay that we do that. Oh. This is an already executed agreement. Okay. All right. Uh, to serve as an example of what would be extended. Okay. From so July it'll be 1st. different dates. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. That that, uh, that would just kind of go in the other way. And then the only other question I had was in terms of Arlington share. It says shall not exceed, and you, you have a very specific number. Is that the exact number, or has it been trending a little bit lower? Uh, no, so the only number that would change uh, in this document when it is updated are those figures to be updated to FY15 and then potentially FY15 cost amounts. Mm -hmm. um, no, we're, we are both, we are and Bedford is below those total amounts. Uh, we, we put those in there as ceilings for both Arlington and Bedford so that. Uh, so those are the ceilings up yes. until, what is it, June of 2014? Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions or a motion? <coughs> uh, move approval. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. 5-0.
All right, next up we have correspondence received. We have, have an item, thank you, uh, from Jeffrey Beck with the MMA about um, the annual town report award that we received. Uh, we have Richard and Turcott and Howard Muse uh, with a report on the TAC project list. And we have um, a letter about Bow Street safety concerns. Should we refer to TAC as a suggestion, a, I believe? Yeah. But I don't know if Mr. Lockwood might be here. Yeah. Do you want to come on up and talk to us about uh, your your letter? Sure. And just say your name, thank you. But Hi, my, my name is David Lockwood. I'm a resident at 24 Bow Street. I've been there for almost 20 years now. Yep. Um, I'm at the end down as you almost get to the baseball field. Um, just recently, uh, one of my cars was parked uh, outside of my house during the middle of the day, and somebody decided to take my driver's side mirror off and it kind of prompted me to bring this forward as an issue again. I'd done so in the past. It's probably now the fifth or sixth time that's happened. Um, it's also just recently my neighbor at number 26 had their car totaled right outside of their house. And some years back, I had a car totaled out front of my house. And as I was speaking to my neighbor at 26 today, they said the person next to them had had their car crashed into, and whether it was uh, a total loss or a near total loss had happened right there. So the concern that we have is, obviously, during the day, there is a need for us to be able to park out in the street. But clearly, there's something about that stretch of the road that is causing a lot of damage to our vehicles to occur. So you know. Uh, we, we were just wondering what the, the options potentially were. Um, I know some years back when I had raised the concern, um, I believe the DPW put out a couple of the markers to count the number of cars traveling up and down the street. And it was a considerable number. Um, obviously, I don't have those numbers to hand, but they did follow up. But then nothing else came beyond that. And, you know, at this point, you know, it's yet another $200 I'm paying to replace the mirror on my car, you know, and I know my neighbor, they had to, uh, it was, like I said, it was a total loss on their vehicle. And, you know, just as, a, as an example of, of how much damage occurred, when the car was damaged in front of my house, it was a small SUV, maybe the size of, say, a RAV4, that was struck so hard, the car actually went all the way across the sidewalk and onto my front yard, hmm. almost hitting my house. So uh, the current posted speed limit is 20 miles an hour, and I'm pretty sure that a car park, put in park has to be struck pretty hard to move it across the, the sidewalk there. So obviously any help uh, that you can give us, it would be greatly appreciated and obviously still maintaining our ability to park out in the street during daytime hours. Kevin? Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I will move that we do refer this to TAC. Um, may I ask, do you have a driveway, sir? Yeah, I can accommodate two cars on so, so it's sometimes night. there's a third one that you have to have out well, there. Well, right? or like, for example, this time uh, my fiance had just literally, she teaches at the Belmont High School there. She had just run home, parked out there for two minutes as she ran into the house. And during that time, someone had clipped off, you know, off the, off the mirror there. So it is our practice to typically park in my driveway. But, you know, as you can imagine, time to time, you do want to park in front of your own house. Yeah, I, I, of course you do. I don't blame you for that. And it's... And people breaking the speed limit are breaking the speed limit. But TAC is pretty clever, I think, and maybe, you know, they'll take a look at it. Although, uh, what you don't know, sir, is that we also have a report from TAC. They're currently working on 23 projects. Yeah. Uh, but they are very thorough. But we will, re we will refer to them. I also wonder if, through you, Mr. Chairman, if we might uh, ask Adam to have the police look at certain enforcement measures there. Um, but. You know, whether there's a permanent solution or not, I don't know, but I, I hope we can find one for you. Okay. Can I you just say what TAC stands for? Just to uh, the Transportation Advisory Committee. Okay. Any, any matters like this related to us about the roads and traffic in particular, uh, we sent to this mm -hmm. committee mm -hmm. who, and believe me, they, they will do time and motion studies and everything else to determine. And they, uh, as I say, I think they're very clever in terms of recommendations they come up with, which will come back to us. 
but as long as you make sure the mayor of Arlington over there on your right, Marie Kropelka, uh, just be in touch with her and she'll let you know when they're back to us with a recommendation. But they're so thorough, I'm sure they'll also contact you about it as well, okay. sir. And just as a point of context, there is a, a, a painted pedestrian crossing right in front of my neighbor's house at number 20. So, you know, there is already whatever measures are in place to try and slow people down to protect just regular pedestrians crossing there. So, fortunately, so far, it's only been a car and some right. mirrors. But, right. you know, we do have kids in the neighborhood, particularly as they go down towards either accessing the bike path or the baseball field and ice rink there. So. Yes, sir. Steve? Um, I was thinking maybe we should, after reading tax, um, list. Yeah, list that they provide us tonight. Maybe we could wait to send it to them until we hear what the police department has to say on the matter. Uh, maybe there might be some sort of, you know, enforcement tools that can be used um, that can be just as effective without, um, you know, bringing this before TAC again. Um, I think that, you know, from what I got at least from there. Um, letter to us was that um, they would like us to tone back what's being sent to them and I think that looking down another avenue like the police department and having Officer Rato and um, his team look at this might be a pretty good option prior to sending it to TAC. Joe? Oh, I actually had a, qu had a question. It looks like Kevin actually has something well, to add to, to speak. You know, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to accept Stephen's recommendation. I think it's a good one. Um, so, if you want to make that motion, Steve, or change mind to we refer first to the police, ask them to report back, yeah, yeah. and then we'll go from there. Yeah, maybe uh, move asking Officer Ruto to look at the situation and um, acting acting on it, um, on sending it to TAC at a later date, potentially. Diane? I, that works because I believe Officer Ruto sits on yeah, TAC. He does. So yes. if, if he takes a look at it and he says, you know what, we can just take care of this as Mr. Yeah. Burns suggested through the police department right now, or if he feels no, it really should go to TAC. The police I do come out and monitor from time to time because I think you get a lot of cars coming yeah. down Park Ave and just cut straight through to get down to Summer Street. Mm -hmm. So periodically we do have the, uh, I don't know the name of it, but the, the speed detector that uh, yeah. shows you how fast you're going. and. I know I've seen people being uh, with the speed gun being captured. So I, I, I definitely appreciate that the police department are already there on some kind of schedule. But obviously, you know, Need people come down there every day. So, Joe. Yeah, and I um, I actually come down there every day too myself. So just so I can get it straight in my in my head, are you actually on the bike path side of the road, or are Correct. you on the you my are? property butts right up onto the bike path? Okay. you can't access it right there, but it's right on it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Town Manager. Any comment or? No, I, I think the recommendation the the board has made is a, is, a, is a good one. All right. So we have three items, one of which to refer to TAC, and two that we're receiving. Is there any further comment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming down. Sorry about your members. Yeah. I've lost twice, but I know what it, it's a business with a big truck. So we are going to do new business reasonably quickly, and then we're going to go into executive session. Um, Marie. Attorney Bime. Hi. Hi. Wow. I'm going to. Do You'll have to forgive me, but, like, but I'm going to. I read it wrong the first time, and it's like locked into my head until I fix it. I know how that happens. I know. So it's I'm not the worst say, I've heard. Doug, what do you got for us? Yeah. <laughs> so my understanding is that the uh, the board would like to go into executive session for the purposes of um, reviewing a uh, complaint and taking yep. and determining what uh, necessary action uh, should be made upon that. And but can I pause you right now? I we're gonna, I, I'm actually not quite at that point yet. Uh, so what we actually welcome we go around and we do new business with each person. Oh, and then after that, then we're going to go to executive session, and I will ask you to I'll ask to hear that at that time. I have no new business. All right, I, Adam. Uh, just very quickly, um, I know I included it in the board's packet this week. Very proud of the work a number of folks in Arlington have done to win the annual report, second place in the annual report award, as the board received notice from the MMA. Arlington Visual Budget won the Innovation Award from the MMA. And the annual budget and financial plan was honored with the Distinguished Budget Service uh, Award from the Government Finance Offices Association. So 
been a, you know, an award-winning year for the work a lot of folks do in town. So I just wanted to mention that and tell you how proud I am of that. It's excellent. I'm sorry, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. I did want to, I'm sorry. I, I did want to add Good. one thing. I'm sorry. I neglected to before. I just wanted to recognize the terrific work of Ed Marlenga, uh, who is serving as acting town council and has made life tremendously easier for me to start out on our first day. Um, there's been a lot of active business, nothing that merits new business attention before the board this evening, but I just wanted to recognize that Ed's done a terrific job and I very much appreciate the, uh, all the work that he's put into serving this community as well as to making an easier transition for me. What, you didn't want to deal with the $7 million lawsuit? <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> Thank you, Attorney Malinga. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. All right, Kevin. Yes, yeah, so, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Adam, I'd like to know what specific steps you plan on taking to pull us out of the cellar of second place in the town annual <laughs> report and bring us back to first place. Uh, uh, you can write a report on that if you want, but congratulations. I mean, it does seem every week that there's more and more awards that this town has won, uh, and in a great part due to your leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just one other item under new business. Um, Mr. Gilligan, the treasurer, has decided to uh, issue an internal posting for a deputy treasurer uh, position. And I, uh, while that is within his right, uh, I am bothered to say the least that he did not feel it necessary to come speak to this board that must confirm that position. Uh, for more than a year, I've asked Mr. Gilligan to please delineate for us his responsibilities versus the position he created for his manage, 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 manager analysis, what, what's management called? Management analyst. Management analyst and the assistant treasurer. So we can make a decision, is the assistant treasurer position lo any longer necessary or is that one of the places where we might be able to save money? So I just want to make it clear, I personally will not confirm anybody for this position until Mr. Gilligan discusses it with us and provides that specific information, that's just my position. Thank you. Thank you. Diane? Um, oh, okay. Merry Christmas, otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Potter. <laughs> um, just very quickly, uh, Pop Warner Sea Squad placed fourth at Nationals, very proud. Um, hit everything in their performance. Uh, so to all of us, it was first place. Um, but they did fantastic down there, great um, opportunity. Um, thank you, ACMI, for the amplification when they said, oh, it's really easy, and they promised this time they'd do it quickly, and they, they certainly came through on that. And just uh, two other things. Um, we're going to be addressing, from a conversation with the chair, um, Hackney licenses in, our, in language, as well as alcohol. Um, proposed language. I know I have a proposition about the um, correct legal language for to for this board to vote on. If they agree, that's fine. If they don't, they, that's fine too. About the date of the um, the date the offense is committed is the date that the penalty punishment shall commence. A day of the week, I should say. Um, whatever the legal is, and then anything else that anybody else has, and then put it before the board, and you know, a majority may say, no, we're okay with the, with the way it is. And then the yeah, only- Can I just cut sure. So if, it, if, they, if they're caught on a Wednesday, their punishment has to start on a Wednesday. Okay, all right, sorry. That's just, that's uh, I'm putting that okay, in the no, Somebody may say, say they want it to end or not, or something different. And then the only other thing is I saw this, I can't remember where I read it, Google over the Times or something, that um, I think Boston was one, one, one of them cited, that they are switching in certain areas the handicap plaque, placard, the nationally recognized placard, and it kind of looks like it's still the handicap oh, yes, placard, right. but it's like on a bike or something. I'm not saying it right. It just, it's a more um, mobile. Like, mo yeah, it looks like it's in motion. Yeah. I, was, I just thought that was interesting. I was just wondering if I could put that before you, yeah, Mr. Town yeah. Manager. It's not a high priority at all, but when I saw it and having you know, yes. so many handicaps in my family for various reasons, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh nope. sorry. One other concern uh, that we got in our packet on Friday. A question, and, and you can get us this answer later if you want. I, I was wondering how it was possible for the residents on the pri private way portion, I think it was Wollaston Ave, that we now, that number one, our fire apparatus cannot approach it certain ways, and we also cannot plow it. Um, I'm wondering, A, do we have safeguards in? Was there a plan and the contractor deviated from it? 
or can private way owners redesign their road and we the town doesn't issue any guidelines that, that this is the steep this is the grade and then naturally as you've done letting us know about this issue if you could please let us know follow up because I'm just really concerned you know snow when someone gets in a bad accident and it's not the town's fault but I'm just wondering don't we have safeguards in when people go in and do their private ways that they have to adhere to my understanding is this this one individual a butter who made these uh, changes on their own which created sort of this drop-off situation that wouldn't allow either fire trucks right. to go over it or plow to right. plow it uh, so uh, frankly we wanted to let folks know about yes. uh, mm. the services that they would or would not receive, but also hopefully put uh, other abutters on notice that something amongst the, uh, all the abutters needed to happen for those services to, to come back. So beyond that, we have to sit and wait. I'm, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just saying it's, we've notified them of the problem, what the issue is. We've notified our town personnel so we don't bottom out any of our apparatus or trucks, and now we're just waiting. And see, is that I mean, we, we, we can take a another look at it, but I'm not aware yeah. of any method we have okay. to, to lever them. I'd be curious, yeah, I'd be curious actually. That I, had, I hadn't really thought about it in that life, but that actually, because if we're approved, because presumably the Board of Survey at some point appointed the approved their survey, and if they're not, if the road is no longer within the survey, I wonder what the what's possible at that point. Yeah, I'm not sure that it is yeah. on the survey, but we can, yeah, take a look at it. Okay, that, that was it. Thank you. Joe. Uh, thank you very much. Um, just a couple things. Um, the, uh, as, as you all know, the manager and um, the superintendent organized uh, a tour of Arlington High School for a number of officials. Uh, um, it was uh, led by Dr. Janger and, and uh, Mr. McCarthy. Uh, I know the one that um, the three of us were on went, went uh, two and a half hours. It was pretty, pre uh, pretty extensive. Um, I noticed when we went into one of the rooms, there was a poster there that said the uh, journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So this seemed to be the uh, first uh, step towards really getting our, our hands around the, the situation at the high school, which I know we'll have long uh, discussions about uh, in the years uh, to come. I did want to say that I found it ironic that the building that seemed to be most problematic was of the same era as our community safety building, which has given us so many headaches. So. Um, uh, th this uh, this is going to be a long long process that a lot of us will be uh, involved in. But I want to thank is that those. What they call the freshman building, Joe? Is that Down, the uh, one Downs in the back? House? Downs. Yeah, I yeah. think they also call it the freshman. Yeah. Building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, used to be. I don't know. When I was. Um, there. And also, I was very I was negligent when uh, Mr. Fields was here. He he's been working on a lot of other um, initiatives besides the, the signage and first first lights. Um, I just got pulled into a group of. Uh, folks from different organizations in town, which he is also a part of, um, working on uh, organizing a TEDx conference for Arlington um, a, a year from January. Um, so th that's what? Sorry, a, TED. a TEDx. The technology, engineering, and design. Uh, the TED, TED Talks are something that you can find on, online okay. and, okay. on a number. But you can have affiliate um, conferences. And, and if we pull this off, which I know we will, uh, we, we may well be the um, first community of our size to, to really do one of these. Uh, so the, the Arlington Center for the Arts is involved and uh, some other members of the arts community in the film festival and such. So, uh, but M Mr. Um, Field is really helping to, to keep things on track with that. I also wanted to say that um, there's been a lot of buzz this week. Uh, his incubation efforts also look like they may be uh, yielding some fruit with some large vacant spaces that we have um, in, in town. There's been interest uh, with some uh, incubation outfits partnering with some uh, arts uh, collectives and that that's been out I think on some of the lists and such so I don't think I'm telling tales out of school there so um, he is um, uh, definitely earning his keep on, 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 on this. So cool. Thank you very much. Thank you Joe. Steve? No new business. Uh, I also have uh, no new business. Um, so let's talk about open uh, the uh, our executive session. So my understanding is that the board uh, would like to go into executive session um, to discuss uh, an open meeting law complaint and decision and action that needs to be taken uh, in respect to that as well as for a review of executive session minutes. Um, there would need to be a roll call, a majority of the vote approving to go into executive session on that and we need to state whether or not uh, an open session will reconvene after the executive session. 
So with that, does the chair sure. basically agree with the purposes of the, uh, the executive session? Do I, sorry, do I what? So I believe that in the packet there's yep. been Well, I agree. That's why we're going. Uh, do, could, does someone want to make a motion? So mm -hmm. oh, second Mr. Gurley's motion. Yeah. And I think we have the caveat that when we come out, we may or may not be taking yeah. a vote. I'll, I'll even say I, ex I anticipate that we will be making a vote when we come back into public session. I expect uh, that it will be a relatively short executive session. But okay. We'll so, so incorporate into Mr. Gurley's yeah. motion. Second. Aye. Uh, Mr. Giro. Aye. 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 Okay. So let's go into executive session. Thank you. We are now back from executive session in regular open session. We took votes in um, executive session, which we will now also do in public session. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I move that we release the executive session minutes for April 11, 2011, for January 28, 2013, for M March 18, 2013, and for June 3, 2013, sir. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any, for, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you. Motion adjourned. We have second. a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned.